Hello, hello, hello. Uh, how is everyone doing tonight? Hopefully everything's working. I think everything's working. Everything should be working. Is everything working on my end? Are we good? We good. We good. I did a bunch of software updates and booting everything up today was a little, uh, a, a little dicey. It's been the, the half hour before the stream today was really rushed. Uh, let's see that, that, Hey, at everyone on live. There we go. Okay, we're good to go. We're good to go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, cool, 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 cool. It's gonna be one of those nights. Show. How's everyone doing today? It's been so long since I've seen you. It's been like. A little over 24 hours. So how's everyone doing? How is everyone doing? Everyone enjoying your weekend so far? Say hello to Brazil. Hello, Brazil. That's not booze. No, I need to be awake. I'm not going to waste alcohol by drinking it and then falling asleep. The, uh, I was really hoping today's video, which if you haven't seen today's video, go watch it. It's, 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 a, it's a throwback to my old school tutorial videos where you, uh, how I put Voron tap in that guy. Um, but I was up to like 2 a.m. editing that thing. And then um, I had some stuff happen with the home server. Um, TLDR, uh, hooray for parity drives with Unraid because I had a drive die on me. Um, so that's what I was fiddling with before stream because I tried to fix it last night and then it, it, no bueno, it's dead. I need a new hard drive. So that'll be in tomorrow. Thank you, Amazon. So I'm tired. <laughs> I am tired. Um, but, but, what, what? We have prizes. That's that's multiple prizes. So uh, we have our Polymaker filament. Every stream we give away of, uh, where is it, where is it? No, that's Prusman. I don't have a spool of Polymaker. Anyways, we give away a spool of Polymaker filament. You know what it is? It, it's, it's this stuff. It's, it, it's printer chow. Grade A premium printer chow. It's good stuff. You can buy some too, link in the description. But if you want to win some, you can, you can just win some because there's a link in the description. We're giving some away. But also, but also, do you have a V0? Do you have a V0.0? Is it a 0.1? Would you like to upgrade it to a 0.2? Well, LDO makes a kit for that. And you could buy it or you can win one of the three we're giving away. Link in the description for that giveaway as well. So we have an L, we have three LDO giveaways tonight they're all the same there it's a kit and then we also have the polymaker filament so how we're going to do this uh the ldo giveaways are every hour throughout the stream every hour i will give away a uh a kit on the hour so remind me in chat so start spamming chat at every hour from now um to do the giveaway so we'll give one away every hour till 11 so three three giveaways and then we'll do the polymaker at the end of the stream like usual there we go and uh, if you don't know what's in the kit, uh, watch Tuesday's live stream because I go through it to the European. So here's the thing, Ella Fox. Um, I don't do giveaways where you have to be here. So if you are here now, you can enter and I'm just gonna draw from the same pool of names. I'm not gonna run a different draw. because I'm, I'm, That involves work and I'm not gonna do that. So if you enter now, you are eligible for all three draws. If you enter two hours from now, you're only eligible for the last one. So for the Europeans, you got the best chance of doing it. Enter now and you're good for all three and then you can go rack out, go to bed. So I'm just gonna spread it out throughout the stream because uh, monkey brain dopamine response or something. Where's the draw link? David, if you look at the pinned message in the chat, it says fabulous prizes await. Um, those that read the video description. I'm assuming they're in the video description. There's two links. There's one for the LDO and one for the Polymaker because I was just gonna use one, but I hope 
If you're a person who has no plan on building a V0 and doesn't have a V0, winning the LDO V02 upgrade kit, it's it's a bed, some extrusions and a fan and panels. It, it's and screws. So if if you don't have a V0, it's not really worth winning in my opinion. You can't really do much with it, really. So only enter that if you like actually can make use of it. But if you want to enter it, I'm not your I'm not your mom. I'm not telling you what to do. But I, that's why I split them up. So. How oh, big is the V0 print bed? This big. It's this big. And then uh, what else? I did make the mid panel. Um, I did a little, I got the mid panel made here. So let me, uh, let me show you off what I did. Ba, 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 ba. No, not giveaways. So, so, so here's me uh, freezing my butt off in the garage. Um, doing some machining because it's like negative 10 out um, and I live in Canada. My garage is not heated and Here is uh, me machining the plate It's doing its thing. Yay rep wrap firmware on CNC uh, So yeah, so plates done panels done. It actually came out ugh, pretty good zoom There you go so I'm hoping I cut it right for the little notch for the belted Z. We'll find out when we get to it. Um, but I think we're okay. It should be okay. Also, if you haven't noticed, this is the only camera I have that's 60 FPS. So my hand's like buttery smooth in the overhead camera. Look at that. High frame rate. This is just 30 FPS. Actually, it's like 29 or something. Negative 10. It's C. I'm Canadian, so I use C. Three reboots to get YouTube up. What? Does it have the top hat? Um, we, we're doing the frame. We're building the frame. So if you don't know what exactly we're doing, if you missed part one of this build, I had a V0. I've rebuilt it already once. Um, for the record, this is the fourth time we are building a V0 on the live stream. I have built a V0. A zero one, or actually, wait, no, wait. A V, a v zero, a zero one, another V zero one, and now this one. Okay, a V zero two. So this is the fourth time that we are building a V zero on the live stream. I'd, I'd zoom in, imagine I zoomed in again, okay? But this is the fifth time I'm building a V zero because the first V zero we built on a live stream was a rebuild of a beta unit. This is the fifth time we have built a V0. We're becoming increasingly, uh, uh, dang it, I screwed up the line. What's the, the matrix guy? Increasingly off, no, what is it? What did he say? Anyways, efficient at it. This is the fifth time we built a V0. We're becoming increasingly efficient at it. So anyways, uh, this frame right here, it's three different brands of extrusions, if you happen to notice, because it's all custom extrusions that I cut by hand, because uh, during the development of the V0, th stuff changed a lot. And we're basically, we tore it down to this point, and now we're gonna build it back up again as something greater and better. So, talk to Steve Builds about what? Travis, Nero is a Voron shill. I, Travis, I, I don't know how to break this information to you. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I, I am on the Voron team. Um, I, I, I am on the Voron team. It's, it's the thing I do. It, it's true. Go on the Discord. I've got a red name there. <laughs> If anything, I'm an LDO shill. <laughs> I, 
actually admit it. I never not admit it. I fully disclose it every time anything comes up. <laughs> uh. When did that happen? Um, almost five years ago now. I got my V1 cereal in March of 2018. And I, 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 here's the thing, at the time it really wasn't the Voron team, it was just the, the people who had built Vorons on the, the Slack that were the cool people, basically. <laughs> I've been on the Voron, so yeah. So yeah, I, I, so apparently that's news to people. Apparently that's news to people, but yeah. I am actually a, I'm an admin on the Voron Discord server, the Reddit, you know, I don't go on the Reddit much. Um, although to be fair, I don't, I am not involved with a lot of stuff that I excuse myself from because of potential conflict of interest because I run this YouTube channel, which this YouTube channel is fully my own thing. So I need to work on the sarcasm detecting. Yeah, but sometimes it's fun leaning into it. Sometimes it's leaning into it and just going with it. So, uh, yeah. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There we go. We're on CNC when? I don't know. Somebody would have to design one. And the thing is with CNC, designing CNC is easy. Designing a good CNC. Uh, oh, let me put live chat on so I can actually see everyone. There we go. Okay, so there we go. Printers for ants like Micron or Swell. Um, you're gonna get the most bang for your buck from the V0, simply for the fact that it's so simple. Um, like the printers for ants basically do the same thing with more, okay? Um, at the 120 millimeter size, you're going to like quad gantry leveling at 120 millimeter size printer is a little overkill. However, I still think the printers for ants are fun builds. In my opinion, they're more of a, you build them because you want to build them instead of you build them because you, you you need them, if that makes sense. Um, let me pull up the manual here for V02. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. It's gonna be really annoying because I, I keep a bunch of my stuff that like I access with both computers on my server and my server is offline right now. So uh, hopefully I don't run into issues tonight. Uh, is there a reasonable chance of welding a Voron frame would increase rigidity? No, not worth it. Not worth it at all. Welding it just, you're not gonna make it any more stiff. If anything, you're gonna warp the shit out of the frame. Good. Have you welded aluminum? Um, uh, where is it? Where is it? Who is it? Joe, have you, have you welded aluminum before? Um, why is it offline? I had one of my drives die, which kind of sucks because it was only about a year old. So I'm going to contact Seagate. But in the meantime, I just got a replacement drive on the way from Amazon. JB well, yeah, not worth it. And I think this frame is riveted. I don't think this frame is actually welded together. Um, yeah, it's screwed together. This frame isn't welded. It's sheet metal and it's stamped. Maybe there are some tack welds or, or spot welds, but it looks mostly screwed together. Yeah, it's all like just clips and yeah. Do I have a Miranda CNC? Yeah, they're, they're, here's the thing. Building a CNC out of like just off the shelf parts, you're always gonna have downsides. CNCs want heavy duty. Uh, nothing wrong with Seagate, all I've used for years. Yeah, I, I run a mix of Seagate and Western Digital. So I'm buy, I got a Western Digital on the way because it was cheaper on Amazon. So. P 
P1P with full enclosure X1. I, I personally think the X1 increased cost is not worth it. Buy a P1P if you plan on printing uh, abrasive stuff, get a hardened nozzle for it and enclose it. It's, it's a much more bang for your buck. And that one comes with the PI flex plate, which I prefer over, like I don't even use, but where is the plate? Did I throw it in the garbage? Where is it? Yeah, this thing, the, the engineering plate, whatever this material, yeah, I don't like it at all. Um, I took the flex plate from my bamboo and I put it, or from the P1P and I put it in the X1. And then I took a spare 250 flex plate, PI flex plate that I have and I put it on here. Also, also, um, okay, this is, okay, close enough, close enough, okay. So, just because, you know, there we go. Okay, that, that's a, aluminum tape, good enough. They made the bed 256 by 256. So that way you, 250, which is a nominal printer size, Flex plates for like normal printers, you can't just buy a normal printer flex plate for 250 and put it on these because they're not big enough. You you lose a little bit. So they made their bed a little bit bigger. So if you want to use the whole thing, you have to buy their flex plate because 250 is a nominal size that everyone uses, but they made it went with 256. I'm, I'm using a 250 on it. I don't care. <laughs> Okay, enough with that. Although, if, if, you know, for those new here, if this is your first time watching a build, um, I interact with chat a lot. If, if questions come up, we end up going down tangents. It happens. Okay. Okay, I thought it was foil to stop the balloon. No, the balloon's been taken out. The balloon, we, we have lost the balloon. Hey, the billion dollar F-22 program that's been, you know, flying for 25 years. Finally has an air to air kill. Good for them. Fermio has them. Okay. It's proprietary. Yeah, everything's proprietary on the machines. Everything's proprietary. They're DJI. Bamboo is founded by XDJI. So just look how DJI is and expect the same amount of bamboo. Which, nothing wrong. I fly DJI FPV. So. Like it's, it's a way of doing it, but that's just how they do it. Everything's, they don't, they don't do the open source thing. Okay, uh, before we begin, a word of caution. This machine can maim, burn, electrocute you if you're not careful. Please do not become the first Voron fatality. There is no special Reddit flare for that. Please read the entire manual before you start. As you begin wrenching, please check our Discord channels for any tips and questions that may halt your progress. Most of all, good luck, the Voron team. That, that preface is in every manual. These machines can hurt you if you don't know what you're doing. They are CNC machines with mains voltages in them. There are angry pixies in your walls and you don't want them getting into you. So if you don't know what you're doing, find somebody who does or ask in the Discord. Okay, uh, if you've never built a Voron before, here's the thing. By the way, this is a 270 or 227 page manual plus, 227 plus. It's it's. 246 pages on this manual. So, uh, yeah. I haven't actually looked at this manual yet, by the way. <laughs> uh, part printing guidelines. If you've never printed Voron parts before, they're designed to be printed a specific way. Um, these are the settings you should use. Uh, file naming, if you don't know. Um, primary color, accent colors have a little A in front of it. Um, clear which is a new thing now because we got LEDs because RGB for the win um, is its own. And then quantity is X, usually it's X1, but you'll see X2, X3, X4, et cetera. Um, SDL file list, uh, you can click this link here. So if you need help, here you go. Oh, by the way, Voron does have a forum finally. Um, if, if you want to go to the Voron forum, because people were like clamoring over having us a, an official forum, we have an official forum now. So you can go there if you want, if that's your thing. Uh, reporting an issue, you got the GitHub, and this is just a reference. This manual is designed to be a simple reference manual. Building a Voron can be a complex endeavor, and for that reason, we recommend downloading the CAD files off our GitHub. Um, if there are any sections you need clarification on, 
it's a good idea just to have the CAD open on a monitor because that way you can just pull it up. It's sometimes, depending on the person, the, the image that they use, you might want to see it from a different angle. And if you have the CAD, you could just look at it. So. Uh, question about Zed Seam. I'm having tiny zits. Uh, well, zits, you can you can usually get, get it. If you're getting zits on your parts, you can get rid of the zits with tuning. There's plenty of guides on how to like. Where did I put the printed parts? Oh, yeah. Like you, you, you can get rid of the zits. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't be trying to work around the zits. You should be working to get rid of the zits on your printed parts. So. Wash your pillowcase. Okay. Here's all your nomenclature because you might not know what a flathead screw looks like or what a pocket or a socket head or a button head is or, you know. So here, here's some pictures of what they look like. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Kit card. Kit providers often include part options that are not standard design spec. We've added notes for popular ones marked on the Psycon. Oh, that's new. Uh, Self-tapping screw shims, uh, blah, 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 blah. So just, oh, Maker Bean. Do we still use this? This is a special longer T-nut that is only used in the tool head for securing the belts. I guess we still use these. I thought we depreciated these. I guess they're still around. Okay, how to put blind joints together. If you don't know how to put a blind joint together, uh, this dumb YouTuber guy here, um, Nero3D, whoever the hell that is, that he has a video on it. Go watch the video. Uh, Allen Keys. Oh, BF Dennis. 10 gifted memberships. Cheers. Okay, so Allen Keys. They're invented by Sir Richard Allen, the founder of Ikea, um, looking for a universal... Uh, tool that he could ship with all of the furniture instead of having to rely on you know Phillips heads and flathead screwdrivers and whatnot so you could thank Ikea for the Allen key but there's different types right you can use standard drivers you can use LTT stores you can use ball end ball end is good because you can get it into tight spots don't torque with the ball though um, because the small especially the small ones you can break the ball off and every time I, I have to put a dang disclosure on it now, because everyone every time I tell the IKEA store joke, somebody thinks I'm being serious and leaves an angry message. With like, oh, here's the Wikipedia article. You're wrong. It's a joke. It's a funny. I'm probably still gonna get a message. Hi, if you're watching this stream in the future and, and you saw that was legit information, let me know below. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there you go. Uh, additional tools, you're gonna need some other stuff. Uh, if you need to drill and tap, if you're using a kit, which let's be honest, most people build the V0, most Vorons now with kits, uh, they usually come with all everything done. You just slap it together, so. Thought it was legit. I, so I, 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 I winged that because I, well, not tonight. Years ago when I worked at a tool shop, I had an apprentice um, that I had them going with like all kinds of random things. And one of them was the Allen key thing. Cause he, he I can't remember what he said, but I, I, I'm i like, oh, you don't know why Allen keys exist? Cause he's like, everything on these molds goes together. I'm like, you don't know why they exist? And I, I explained like, Sir Richard Allen, Ikea, I, I just winged it. And uh, he totally believed it. In fact, he told like somebody at school, <laughs> his teacher like, like what, what the hell are they teaching? He was an apprentice, right? Um, from a co-op program in high school. So he's like, this teacher's like, what the hell are they teaching you at that shop? So he never did find the tap dynamite though. He looked for the tap dynamite. Uh, it's next to the can of Adathal. So one day he'll find it. Tool, am I a tool and die maker? Negative, I am a YouTuber, but previously I was uh, tool and mold actually. So here are all the different types of extrusions. Again, um, this build's gonna be a little weird at first because we're reusing, you know, 
stuff from a, a torn down build. Um, so we're gonna be kind of jumping around a little bit, I think, cause some stuff's like already done. So. So these are all your different extrusion types, depending on where the hole is and how many holes. Uh, that's how you can tell which extrusion you have and how long it is. Um, everything's metric. It's all metric here, okay? None of this 5 16th bullshit. Um, extrusion callouts, and I'm missing extrusions. So just, just, just read everything. Bucket of steam. <laughs> oh, this is new. Uh, I don't know who drew this. Uh, grab your guarding tools, we're about to blast off. So the, the joke with Voron is building rocket ships with guarding tools, because to build any of these printers, you don't need anything more fancy than like Allen keys and wire strippers and a crimper. You don't even need that if you're using a kit that came with a pre-made wire harness. So none of these machines require anything fancy to build. It's all off the shelf stuff. You might need a drill if you're self-sourcing your rails. Okay, so this is the thingamajig that we're gonna start with, okay? Freedom fractions. <laughs> okay, so I never printed these. I hope I don't need them because um, my rails are all attached. So I think we're okay. Um, but these little printed guides, um, if you're building off an LDO kit, they come with a little metal piece for this. It's super awesome. Okay, so we have that, linear rail pe preparation. There's a whole thing about linear rails, how to grease them. Uh, this is some shitty game. Again, why are we watching this? Why are we giving this guy three cents to watch an ad? Click the links. Every time you see one of these, it's a little video on how to do it. Um, so there we go, how to install them. I've done this before. If you really want to know, go watch one of the previous streams that I built one of these. Um, why rails? What are you doing computer? Why are you thinking? Okay, so we're gonna start with our uh, Y rails because it looks like we're starting with the top and these are already installed. We're good, okay. So these go in and these install, MGN7, that's there. So let's, uh, so 38 millimeters. So let me just double check the, just in case I have to shift anything, I'll double check some of these sizes. Uh-oh. Where did my scale go? I got this scale, I'll just use this one. Oh, David's here, hi David. Everyone say hi, David. So 38 millimeters. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so those are good. Um, I'm gonna try and re-grease these in a bit. Uh, would you be mad at me if I built a Voron with V-wheels replacing linear rails? It wouldn't be a Voron at that point. It'd be whatever you're doing. And uh, friends don't let friends design printers with V-wheels. They're used on the cheap entry-level printers for a reason. If you're building something, build better. Okay. So this is new. Okay. So we have end stops on these now. So we got to put this on. So M38, uh, to enter extrusion slot into a nut. So yeah, so in, in these images here, they don't show you the T nuts, or in this case, M3 nuts, they don't show you. But it's assumed that every time you're attaching a screw to an extrusion, it's screwing into an M3 nut. So, so we got to put those on. So I need some nuts. Where did I put the bin? Uh-oh. Where did I put the bin? Okay, so when it comes to your screws and organizing, um, your kit shouldn't come with this. So uh, I'm gonna go take a look in another room. I think I have a whole bunch of M38s. So I'm just gonna keep talking just so you guys have something to listen to while I wander around here. Ah. Uh, there we go, M3s. Those are all flatheads. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. What's in here? 
What's in here? That is weird. Okay. Uh, sure, we'll go with this. We'll go with this. There we go. One of these days I will subject you to the screw sorting stream, but not today. Uh, TJ Magento, thank you for coming a member. Why most are not pre-greased? Um, they just aren't. It just is what it is. If I'm looking for nuts, check the floor. Oh, there are be dragons down there. I'm not gonna go looking down there. So, oh, those are M310s. I had a bag of them. Washers, M38, no, M335. Did I use them all up? Oh no! I think I used them all. I think I used them all. Oh no. Oh no. Ah, here we go, here's some. Oh, M2.5, why do I have M2.5? Okay, well, I got some. I got some. And our printed parts. Okay. Why are V-slots bad with linear rails? Oh, um, well, are you talking about V-slot extrusions? or V-slots with like the, the wheels. So the problem with V-slot extrusions on a Voron is you can't build a Voron with V-slot. You can't. Because a bunch of the rails are MGN9. MGN9 doesn't fit in V-slot extrusions. Um, no, that's MGN12. There. So if you got V-slot, okay, if you got V-slot extrusion, MGN9 doesn't sit flat on it, okay? It, it doesn't, you can't use MGN9. You have to use MGN12, which would require you redesigning the entire machine. So, don't do V-slot. Okay, so which one? That one's garbage. Just one little end stop. There's two. Use T-slot. Yeah, you, you use what it's designed for, please. You, you'll get the most out of your printer if you use it the way it's designed. I had a bag. I just lost the baggie of them. <laughs> uh, them are these eights or tens? Please tell me these are eights. Those are eights. Good. Okay. There we go. And this is probably the one that I don't have a size for. Yep. So it's LTT time. V core screw bag screw. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't like V slot. Not a huge fan of it. The V core screw bags. Oh, I haven't looked at the, the V core stuff yet. The Delta printers you were working with, one of the recent vids. Do you ever figure out the Delta? Um, I've got, yeah, we're gonna do the simple thing and just completely use a different uh, controller. So I, I have the printer right here. Um, I've got a uh, Mellow RepRap Firmware E3, whatever the heck board on the way. So that will be in, I'm hoping in a week or two. But that build will probably, the, 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 the Delta build will probably won't touch until one of these builds is done. So. Good thing I'm well organized. Oh, I, everything in this room is so organized. Like, 
when, when you know the 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 American government, their library there, where they store ever all their stuff in Washington. When they when they need examples on how to organize everything, they come to me. Okay, so we got those in. This tape is to keep all the nuts from flying out when I do stuff like spin it around really fast. Is that an LTT screwdriver? Yes, it is. Okay. So we put that on. C extrusions. So these are for them. So let's take a look at the C extrusions. Let's see if we need to shift these around. Okay, so those go on there. 33 millimeters from the top. So I'm hoping this is still uh, 33, otherwise we're gonna have to move it. We are gonna have to move it, shh. Okay, we're gonna have to move it. Sweet. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> I don't have the jigs. One second here. One. Uh, one second here, one second here. We'll use you, because you're faster. I don't have the printed jig, so we're gonna have to kind of skip something and come back. Uh, downloads. Tools. Teen up mod tool. Where's the jig? Pulley jig. Spacer. Where's the extrusion jig? Is it not in the tools? It's only the pulley jig. I got the, I got this jig. Where's, is it not in the folder? Was it not in the folder? Uh, community, GitHub, uh, V0, STLs, tools, rail guide. Oh, okay. Apparently in the file I downloaded, I don't have it. So I'll just move it for now and then I'll just line them later. What slicer is that? Super slicer. Yeah, it must have been not there because I'm like, I didn't, I don't remember printing one. Okay. So we got these back frames. So I have this whole thing assembled already, except for, what do I got here? I don't have that. Okay, so that's that. So preload, okay, so let's see if I have the preloaded nuts in here I'm gonna need. Cause I got two in the front and two there. So I got two there, two there. Yeah, so we're okay. Yeah, so I got the two nuts in there. And those slide on, okay. Okay, so we can put these on. And then we got those at the top. So what I will do is put those on.
Note to self. Don't, uh, when you print all your parts, don't just throw them all in one bin because you, when you have to look for like the little itty bitty stoppers, it gets kind of annoying. Uh, Deco Van, thank you for coming to member. So remember, every hour on the hour, well, for the next three hours, uh, we're giving away a LDO Motors V02 upgrade kit. So read the video description and enter if you want to win one of those. So if you if you already got a V0 or you plan on building a V0 soon and you want the upgrade kit to upgrade it to a V02, um, you might want to enter to win that. So let's see here. So... So we got what, 33 millimeters from the top and then we put that in. So what I will do, is measure down 33 and then install these and I know how much I gotta move it up. go that should be 33 millimeters he's good enough Is there an MGN 9CX carriage? No, because that's not stock. There is a mod that allows you to use an MGN 9 rail for the X carriage, but if you're using a good quality MGN 7, you're, you're still okay. If you wanna do like the stupidly crazy high fast printing, you may wanna do that option. Um, or if your, your kit came with a shitty MGN 7, but just go through all your rails and find whatever rail is the best and use that for your X axis. And you're usually okay doing that. Okay. So orientation and assembly. So those go on like that. And then there we go. Okay. So we should have two M3 nuts in this location before loading the screws. I, I do not. Am I gonna have to take that out? Shoot. Yeah, preload two nuts. Okay, so I gotta put two nuts in the middle there. In there, yeah, two nuts. Okay, just one second here. Hi from BC, hello there. These days I will clean my desk, but not today. 
Nope. What's preloading? Uh, well, because you can't install um, nuts in here after you put it together, you have to put the nuts in before. And, oh man, hopefully that's not stripped. Please tell me this is not stripped. We're gonna have a bad time. We're gonna have a bad time. Okay. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That is a strip nut. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, let's see. Upsy daisy, upsy daisy. Come on. Let's get rid of you two. You two are screwed. Uh, who's Tyler? I have no idea who Tyler is. No bueno T-nuts. No, these, the problem, like this is an old build, right? Like this has already been rebuilt once. This is a second rebuild. Um, everything here was self-sourced. So a lot of like low quality, cheap screws. So I'm just gonna take this opportunity to put some fresh stuff in it. I had to hand tap all these. It sucked. The LDO kit comes with nuts. I have those nuts and um, what really annoys me, I don't know where I put them. LDO sent me some and I legit have no idea where I put them. Believe me, I am I am not happy with that because they sent me a whole bag of them. Like post insertion tea nuts for for fifteen fifteen, and I looked everywhere for them today, and I could not find them. I was not happy. Okay. I was not happy with that. They work on LDO. Oh, they only. Okay, if they only work on LDO extrusions, then uh, I'm screwed because I have Open Beam, Maker Beam, and Solar Biotic on here. Actually, no, I don't because that was the bed, which I, I'm not using anymore. So. So, per the instructions, we now have two nuts in the middle there. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now. I'll uh, I'll have to adjust its position later. Not today, but later. Actually, maybe today. See, see how far we get in this build. Okay. Jason's here. Hi, Jason. We're gonna be doing our first giveaway for the LDO upgrade kit in like seven minutes, so make sure you enter. 
Those are, well, here's the thing. They're not, they were hard to lose because I had them in a bag. I just don't know where I put the bag. <laughs> They're somewhere. They're gonna show up after I finish this build, I guarantee it. Okay, so that's printing, that's good. Sweet. So we wanna put that on, okay. And preload three M3 nuts in the back. Okie dokie. I can do that. Jason, forty nine ninety nine. Cheers. Uh, good luck to everyone. Enjoy the stream. Enjoy the weekend. We will. We will. We will. Thank you. I lost a whole Hydra kit. How do you lose a Hydra kit? That's nut check. Make sure you got your nuts there. You don't want to lose your two nuts there. Okay. So we preloaded those. Direct drive versus Bowden. If you are planning on running a Bowden setup, preload an additional two M5 or M3 nuts. We're not running Bowden. Uh, we're finally using the LGX light. The extrusion comes down and those go there. Build on a flat surface. Flat enough. Um, what's the spacing here? I guess it doesn't matter yet. We'll, we'll get to it. Oh, there you go. 58 and 58. Okay, so 90 degrees, 58. Okay. For real this time? Y yeah. I can't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not a mod, it's a printed part. I just didn't print any of them. We are going uh, OG with this build. Now, normally what I would do is use a, um, a vernier for this, because you could take your vernier and lock it, but my, uh, it, it, these shitty ones kill the battery and it's all wonky and all over the place and I don't have a spare battery. So it is what it is, which sucks. Lost a house, two cars, and a dog. Oof. There we go, 58. I gotta move that camera. I'm gonna do that tomorrow, I think. I gotta move this overhead camera that's up here 
I'm gonna move it from this wall to that wall so that this way when we're doing overhead shots, because I wear a hat now, um, you're not, you know, I'm not blocking everything and you're not seeing my receding hairline. So I I'm, I'm thinking about you, chat. I'm thinking about you. The granite slap. David, David. You think I'm Gucci enough for granite? This shit's quartz. Actually, I've done, I, I've talked about this a lot. Go to a countertop plate, place, place that does countertops, ask for an off cut, go at, offer to pay. But hey, hey, I need an off cut of quartz about this big by this big. Um, can I pay for something out of your garbage? Half the time they'll just let you go and, and don't even pay for it. Um, but it's flatter than pretty much anything else in your house and it's cheaper than an actual proper surface plate. And it's a hell of a lot like thinner because this I can move around. I can just pick it up and put it wherever. A real surface plate is like two to three times the thick thickness of this and isn't as big unless you want to pay a lot of money. So it's, it's a poor man's surface plate. It's a poor man's layout table, but it's, you know what? For building a 3D printer is good enough. So. Okay, so we got that. And then you put that together, which we're... N you put these on and then you take them off. It makes no sense, but it is what it is. And then we put those bottom ones on. Okay. So I need two more of those. One, ah, ah, ah. Two, ah, ah, ah. Draw time? You guys want to do a draw? You want to do a giveaway? Let's do a giveaway. And let me pull up some high-tech tracking software to keep track of all the winter winners here. There we go. Okay. So, um, let me pull up this sheet. Create. There we go. So if you're entered, you're gonna be entered for all the draws, okay? But if you enter now, um, you're only gonna be entered for the next two, okay? So I'm just splitting the draw up over the multiple stream or over the stream, just because, you know, it's a uh, human monkey brain dopamine response. Control copy, there we go. So put all the names in. Okay. So, I'm just gonna let it roll. I'm just gonna let it roll, not even shuffling it. We, we got a printer to build here. We ain't got time for that. Uh, Vinicus. Uh, where are you? One of one, that's what I like to see. Congratulations, you are our first winner. So um, I'm gonna email all your information to uh, Jason after the stream ends and he'll take care of contacting you and all that. So there we go, congratulations. You are winner number one. If you missed your chance to enter or if you didn't win, you're gonna win because you'll just win on the next one. So enter right now if you haven't and then the next one we'll do another draw. So in another hour, we'll do another draw. And if vor building Vorons isn't your thing, and you just want to get some printer chow for your printer, don't forget we also have a uh, spool of polymaker filament to give away at the end of the stream as well. So everyone golf claps in chat for that. Are those almost done? Almost done. We have to enter again. No, you don't need to enter again. You, you do not need to enter again. Um, I'm just gonna keep the same ticket open. Um, so if you already entered, you're already entered. Um, it's just, we'll give the people that get here early a better chance, put it that way. A little bit of a reward. Oh, I didn't say who's gonna win. I just said you're gonna win. 
I can't be more specific than that. Also, also, here's a pro tip. There's a button below me on the screen. If you if you click it, if you if you like that smash button, it might influence the odds and the chance of you winning. Now, I can't say how, but you know, anything is possible. You, you never know. I can't say it will not affect your odds, but it can't not not affect your odds in a, in a way that may or may not affect your way to win. Who knows, you, you clicking that button might flip a, a, a magnet somewhere and, and a zero might become a one and you might win now. Who knows? Weirder things have happened. Waiting on these to finish, because we need those now. Just tap it in. Just, just tap it in. I, I rendered that out and then I uploaded it to YouTube and I sat there watching the, uh, like my, my, my studio page for like half an hour, hoping that whatever company owns the rights to, um, Happy Gilmore, don't, don't flag it. They did not. I was super actually paranoid of that happening. What's Happy Gilmore? It's a movie. It's a very good movie. Okay. T -t -t Today, Junior. Speed. Go. I keep forgetting I can run my Vorons faster than I do. <laughs> Just give me a snack pack. That's Billy Madison. You're getting you're getting your your movies mixed up there. Can we skip ahead in the manual? Can we skip ahead in the manual? We can. I think we can skip ahead. Okay. Um, let's do the Kirigami bed. Are you the Kirigami bed? No, you're not the Kirigami bed. Ah. Can you damage a stepper motor by dropping it? Ah. Oh, are you the Kirigami bed? No, you're the Kirigami bed. Why are there so many screws with this thing? 14 inserts. Why does it come with 14 inserts? Okay. Well. So I've never put together a Kirigami bed. I'm assuming there's a manual for it. Um, Cool. I never printed that diffuser. Shoot. <gasps> chat! Chat! Oh my god, they're back! They're back! It's been so long! They've returned! It's been so long since they've been here. Ah. Uh, report. Unwanted commercial content or spam. Hide user from my channel. It's been, oh, I clicked the button. I clicked the button. Report. Unwanted commercial content or spam. Okay, there you go. Is Sanity here? I don't think, I don't think she's here. Hopefully I printed. Well, I printed everything uh, this week, so. GitHub, Kirigami, okie dokie. But 
we have the LDO Kiri Tell me. Uh, Docs LDO Motors. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that, it looks pretty self-explanatory how this goes together, so I think we have to uh, get some heat sets going here. Just wing it. That's the plan. You, a, a, as the... Uh, as, as the kitties would say, yo ho lo o. Oh. So I don't have a diffuser. What can I use as a diffuser? I don't have a diffuser. Cheers from Brazil. Cheers. Um, you can use hot glue, I think. I've seen people use hot glue as a diffuser. Um, I could use this little baggie <laughs> as a diffuser. Scotch tape. I, I have packing tape. Hot glue works great. Yeah, I'll use hot glue. I'll just use hot glue. Oh no, I've dropped my searing hot iron on the floor. One second here. Yeah? Let me pull up all the parts that you need for you don't really need a lot for a kirigami bed mount don't you you just need oh that's done Ooh, that's hot that's hot okay so where's my kirigami stuff are you kirigami stuff no Here, here, Tommy. Yeah. How does the Z chain attach to this? Because this is different than that. How does the drag chain attach? How, how does this go? What the hell is this part? Yeah, mine doesn't look like that at all. Kirigami LDO. Mine doesn't look anything like that, Jason. What is going on here? Didn't Steve use it? Steve used it, right? Okay, that's that part. That's that part. That's that part. So this part is for the belted Z, which I think is that. So we got that, we got that. So, so this part, this part, and this part. I'm trying to get all the V0 stuff, or the, the belted Z parts. Uh, that part. this part
Maybe this part, I don't know. I think that's about it for the belted Z. I don't know why I have like a million of these. Okay, let's start putting heat sets and stuff. Kirigami goes with, yeah, there's, uh, here, let me, let me pull up the belted Z. Um, So we have this, um, and there is parts for the Kirigami. Oh, we need two M3 nuts on the back here. Oh, that's probably why, oh, that's, oh shit. I forgot, yeah, we're gonna have to swap that around. I'm gonna have to take that off, shit. Okay, make it work. I need two in the back here, so let's see. Yeah. Remember how I, I, I took the, I took two nuts off the back and put them in the front? Yeah, that's because I already had belted zero on here. So I gotta, I gotta swap that, okay. Okay, so I gotta take that one out. Okay, shit, okay. Yeah, it looks like this. It's not that complicated of a, of a part. But there's, yeah, this is the Kira, no, that's not the Kirigami. There's one of these for Kirigami. Uh, where is it? STLs, V0, there's one, yeah, Kirigami bed mounts, yeah. Yeah, so there's that one, Kirigami bed mount, bed mount, Kirigami, V0 belt, V0 belt. I don't, which one of these do I use? These are all the same, these three are the same. What, what's the difference? V0 belt, top belt, bottom belt, belt mount. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. See how biggie. Okay. Now, where is the LDO Kirigami stuff? General. This is it. So where, where is the printed parts on here? Uh, no. In this Discord stream chat. Okay, one second. Here. Okay, that doesn't look like my part at all. That doesn't look like this at all. Yeah, that part looks completely different than this one. I don't know. I think I, pr I printed it off of the, uh, I printed it off of the, uh, the thing. So I don't know. I 
That's the belt chain mount. I'll print that one. Okay. Okay. Download. I will print that one. So that means we got to do this on the bamboo. Which means it's going to take freaking forever to heat up. I'll do the update later. Repair. Slice. Print plate. Enable, or enable flow calibration. No. No. Fuck my leveling. Just go. Just go. Print. I don't care. Just, just do your thing. B01 S1 printed parts list has it. Okay. Well, no biggie. I'll, I'll just start installing heat sets because we're going to need to put heat sets and stuff. So I'll just start putting heat sets in while uh, that prints. Always got it for printing. Well, every everything for this machine was printed on bamboo, except for those two parts that I just printed now. easier to swap filament also 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 you can it's not black and white i could still find issues with it but still find it a useful machine jeez like i, I don't know what it is with like people on the internet today with the fact that i can't criticize criticize something yet still use it <laughs> I would have to unload the filament out of here. It would take longer. Plus, everything on this machine is printed on a bamboo for a reason. Because we're testing the bamboo for a video. I am going to melt the hell out of these. There we go. If you hit the X1 at the same time, do they finish at the same time? Uh, no, the P1P is a little bit slower um, because of uh, it doesn't, it's not as aggressive because it doesn't have the part cooling fan. It doesn't have like the, the, the leaf blower mounted to the side, which I have and I have no plans to install it. The machine's loud enough as is and prints fast enough as is. At the same time, do I trip the circuit? I have tripped the circuit in this room once. That's with five printers going, and then I, I turned on a kettle. Because um, that was when I had uh, uh, the coof, and I was locked, stuck down here. So I brought a kettle down here so I could make tea. And uh, yeah, running a kettle while five printers are running on the same circuit, totally a big brain move. You should do it. Nothing happens. Nothing will go wrong. I guarantee it.
that's about it for heat sets for now. There we go. Can go there. No music? I got music going. It's just not crazy loud. So if you're not listening on headphones, you might not hear it. Induction heat bed be a good idea. Probably not. I don't know. I put a little too much super glue in here. Or uh hot glue. One second. surgery there we go uh and with the head bump What are we breaking today? Hopefully nothing. We're putting printers together. We don't want to be breaking stuff. I mean, stuff happens. As long as I break something on camera. That's the thing. As long as we get content out of it, we're good. That's all that matters, right? Okay, so here, so five volt din ground. Okay, so there's that. That mounts to this, like that. Okay, don't need you anymore. Ah! So we're gonna take all these nuts here that are uh, evenly displayed or evenly spaced out on my desk now. And we're just going to press them into this part. Hmm. Well, there's my content. Yeah, there's my content. I love, I love my content. I'm still waiting on this bitch to heat up. There's my content. What are we at? 99. so hot okay this don't stick in whatever Magnet plate thingy. I've got a few of them. The problem is they're full of screws and all like screws and whatnot already from other things I've taken apart and not put back together. Okay, uh, you need a CPAP for sleeping? No. I did ask that, but no.
One day I'll just get the little guy in here and be like, hey Calvin, if you pick up all the all, all the nuts, everything that's shiny off the floor, I'll give you a dollar. And be like, okay. Who makes the flattest V0 beds? Mine has a huge dip in the corner, which makes it real. Any of the good ones, they're, they should all be good. Like, let's be honest, they're so small, you really shouldn't have issues with beds that small. It's 120 millimeters. There ain't nothing to it. Okay. So while that's doing that, and this is doing that, and that's doing that, and what's this for? Oh, that's if I want to do, like, put a little break in. I won't. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to plug it in directly. I don't even know where this mounts. Do I have a printed part for it? I don't know. Let's fix these rails. There we go. <sighs> Come on. Uh, did you give Calvin last night's print? Um, actually, I, that print failed. <laughs> after the stream, I had it going. And then after the stream ended, um, we went out for dinner. And when I came home, it was spaghetti because it got knocked off the bed because it, it warped to shit again. And then I... I I ended up just moving the printer over to its spot and haven't done it yet. I still got to run an input shaper tune and whatnot on it, so. Print failed. It happens. Well, hopefully these never have to come out because those are... There we go. Okay, so now I gotta put two nuts in the back of this. So, I think what we're gonna do is take that off. I could take the two nuts out of the front out. I'm just gonna leave, Jesus Christ. Every time it does that input shaper thing, I, I don't expect it. So we need two nuts in the back here. I don't know where this guy came from. I'm just gonna... You're from here. You stay in there. There we go. Okay, so I got the two in there that we're gonna need for belted Zed. 
These are now in position. That is still flat, We're good. Good thing I printed these. I no longer need them. Cocktail tonight. Um, I got a monster. I don't think monster and whiskey goes together well. Okay, so that's doing that. So we could probably mount this on, I think. Okay, but we got to put this on. So how does this go? Do we have any pictures of how this mounts on the Kirigami bed for the belted Z? So if that goes on like that, that's that. Is there no pictures of the Kirigami bed? Okay. So I'm assuming it goes upwards. I'm no, oh no, it goes like this. It goes like that, yeah. It's gotta go like this. So that goes like that, okay. Monster and vodka. Well, yeah, if I had vodka, that that would be a more traditional beverage. What's the benefit of belted Z? It, it's more faster. That screw went in on an angle. There we go. Yeah, good enough. Um, in, in this case, um, I actually don't have the parts to do the lead screw. Um, the original V00, the lead screw wasn't integrated. It was like a tackle box system. Um, and then on V01 and V02, now it's actually like an integrated lead screw. So one, I don't actually have the hardware to do the, the stock lead screw setup on this build. Um, and two, um, I just wanted to do the mod. This had a belted Z in it. Like we had already put a belted Z in it before. Um, and I, I wanted to keep it. It's something different. Why not? Now, technically on paper, uh, there's no lead screw wobble to be a potential issue. You have faster Z travel. Um, and I think you do higher micro, or I can't remember if you get higher resolution, but does, not that it really matters, but. For an Ender 3, here's the thing with your Z. If your motion is already smooth, like it's, you don't have wobble issue, you're already printing at 0.2 layer height. Right, you're, you're not gonna get any more resolution out of it. It's an Ender 3, so it's not like you're pushing the, the limits of speed anyways. So belted Z on an Ender is kind of like, yeah, you can do it if you want, but I don't think you'll really see much of a difference. Uh, this is all filament, uh, filament. This is all, this is all filament. Uh, this is all uh, Polymaker ASA. Um, tell you exactly what it is. It's Polymaker. Is it ASA or PE or ABS? Yeah, Polylite ABS. Um, this is their teal and whatever the purple is. So it's ABS actually, Polylite ABS. It, it, it's more purple than, the, the camera makes it look a little like tinged uh, blue, but. There you go, it looks better in that light. There you go. Okay. So we might have to fiddle with some stuff here, I got a feeling. So that's that. Huh. 
that's 58. That's not 58. One of these is off. I knew it. Yep, so that's that one. That one's not screwed down at all. Did I use the wrong size screw? That's the wrong size screw, shit. Can I fix that easily? No. No, I cannot. <laughs> I can't pivot it. <laughs> Shit. There we go. That makes more sense. Colors look great. Yeah, I'm really happy with these colors. It's going to be a little weird once we get the top hat on. Because the um, the top hat is black because they didn't uh, LDO didn't have silver extrusions, so the top hat's black. Um, but it is what it is. What you may have to do with this, anytime you put the Z on, there we go. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, let's go back to the manual. Where are we even at in the manual for this? Yeah, I'll put that on. Okay. Do I gotta put heat sets in here? I gotta put heat sets in here. Damn it. More heat sets. Heat you back up. How come Vorons have a top hat and a skirt? Well, the skirt hides the electronics and the top hat is only on the Bowden machines. Um, the machines that don't have Bowdens are on um, umbilical machines. These ones have drag chains, they don't, these don't have a top hat. But on a, a V2 or V0, which it's in the other room, the wires come out of it in a, an umbilical and you gotta put a hat over it if you wanna enclose it. No more deliveries to EU? They deliver to EU? What do you mean they don't deliver to EU? Like we, we just, they just updated their contest rules and they still do EU delivery. So what you talking about Willis? go melting 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 you could tell i'm tired today you could probably tell i'm tired <laughs> 
Going to bed at 4 a.m. and waking up at 8 probably didn't help. What about a scarf for a wristwatch? Well, we have a pocket watch. You can put pocket watch on if you want. Okay, I can tell this part right here is not a Voron part. Okay, I can tell just by putting these heat sets in that this part right here is it a Voron part by how much plastic is getting smooshed up when I put the heat sets in? template than a ruler yeah, if you want they both do the same thing normally I use um, a vernier and I just lock it at the thing and use that but um, unfortunately mine's kind of broken again uh, take care Chris okay so if that goes like that That goes like that. Okay. So this goes on like that. Are we coming up in the other draw through? Cool. You have about 15 minutes. Remember, every hour on the stream, between now and 11, so at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, we're giving away a LDO Motors V0.2 upgrade kit. So if you want to win one, you have to enter. Like, if you haven't yet, do it now. High speed tool seal, that'd be overkill. You want brass, brass transfers the heat better. Um, yeah, I've heard the, the soft fever fork of the bamboo is pretty good, but here's the thing. I'm, I'm still in review mode for the bamboos. So I'm using them as they came, right? Cause I do plan on doing a video on them. Although honestly, with the way their community reacts, I might not anymore because I just don't want to deal with it, but we'll see. Yeah, I'll probably do a Rook once there's a kit. So, according to the official manual, we put that on, we put the link on, we got the end on here. I'll just let it take off some of this so we're not flopping in the breeze here. Okay, so we put that on. Uh, don't gotta do any of this. Oh, hey, the ancient art of Kirigami. If you have a Kirigami bed, you can attach it now and uh, skip to page 43. Cool. Where is page 43? 43, cool. So now we gotta mount it. Yeah. Uh, I think most of the printer community, here's the thing, any, any community where there's tribalism, the, there's toxicity. It, it just, it is what it is. It, video games, consoles, 
armed forces, whatever. Any type there's like communities where there's different sects within a community or different groups within a community or like go on a car forum. Same thing, right? At least we're not having, at least people aren't making shitty bumper stickers with like knock off Calvin and Hobbes peeing on a Creality logo, okay? At least we got that going for us, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it, it's not strictly a 3D printing thing. It's just, you know, it, it just, it is what it is. Um, so it's, it's not strictly a 3D printing thing. Um, I do understand the horse blinder comment though. Like, here's the thing. I use multiple different printers. I have no problem talking highly of some and highly of others. And like, it's okay if something's wrong, it's not black and white. It's okay to have a defect. It, 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 nobody's nerfic. And if you think your printer is perfect, then, well, just don't buy, why are you buying the new one? There's always room to improve. And if somebody says, hey, I think this could be better. How's that bad? <laughs> oh no, he wants us to have a better printer. Shun the non-believer, shun. community leaders managing the group. I've never interacted really with any of the, the bamboo community leaders. Uh, the only person I've talked to from bamboo is, uh, uh, what's his name? He was with a K, Kaba King, I think. And I haven't talked to him in a while. Actually, he reached out to me before the holidays and wanted to, to touch base and like get some feedback from me. And I said, sure, after the holidays and I completely forgot. I should probably get back to him. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm on their Discord, but I don't go on their Discord, and that's, and I won't touch the Facebook group. Then again, I don't touch any Facebook groups, so. It's Facebook. I will say, putting these uh, screws in on an angle like this is super annoying. Steve, I'm dying. Don't be dying. It's bad for the ratings. Uh, it's folks right ready. I just get annoyed by asking. Hey, if people didn't ask the same question a million times, I would not be doing YouTube right now. Literally, the reason I started my YouTube channel go look at some of my first Voron videos it was literally, I got fed up with people asking the same thing a million bloody times on the discord. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to make a video about this. And now we're here. So, uh, small victories or something. I don't know. push from the middle that ain't bad it's a little chunky in spots but it ain't bad IPA is less well it kind of makes sense because they probably made a sh uh, like they ramped up production and now demand is back down to probably near pre-pandemic levels. So it would make kind of sense that IPA would be cheaper now. 
than before the coof. There you go. Did I cut myself or stab myself? I cut myself. Blind joint video. That's uh, one of the reasons my, my, if you look at my videos, I don't get a ton of views. Like even the video I put, how did the video I put out today even do? I checked the video I put out today like an hour after I put it out and then I haven't really checked it since. What are we at right now? What are we at? 5,000 views, that's not bad. Um, but I have a lot of videos that are basically evergreen content. Like, I mean, where is it? Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. I've got videos linked in, in the, the Voron build manual that will, oh, ah, oh, oh, betrayal. Betrayal. I've been betrayed. <laughs> uh, but I got videos in the in the the Voron manual or on how to like do heat sets and all that stuff. So betrayed. Been betrayed. Abandoned. By my own people. Wrong end of the drag chain. Um, I got the floppy end. This is the floppy end. You want the, I don't know. I, I always usually have the vertical end at the bottom. There we go. Okay, that's good there. Okay. So we have that there, that's there, that's there, that's there, that's on there. Those go up there, cool, skip all that. Sweet, sweet. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. Okay, is that end stop? Um, oh, there's, the end stop goes there now? Really? I didn't know we put it at the bottom now. Okay, I guess it goes at the bottom now. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I didn't know that. What the fuck is this? Okay. I didn't know we put it at the bottom now. That's, uh, that's news to me. Okay. So I need to put the good micro switch. Where is the good one? There we go. Got a... Remember, this probe is D2F. This probe is D2F. It's down to find your Z home. Okay. So if we're looking at it like that, that goes like that. I gotta take the stupid little lever off. There you go. And I need some. Uh oh, where'd that go? I had a whole bag of these screws and I don't know where they went. Uh oh, I got two. Do, isn't it um, sensorless now too on the X and Y? Didn't we go to sensorless on the X and Y now? Yeah, XY is sensorless. Is 
still have a vid in the media. I, I know, I still got a lot of vid videos. It's funny, I could tell when there's a manual release um, because the, the videos that are linked in the manual get a big peak in views. Steve, hey Steve, how you doing, buddy? Okay. So we got the switch there and the little clicky goes towards the outside, okay. And that goes on the bottom here. Oh, so it doesn't use that little cover plate. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to take this off. Yeah, sensorless homing got a lot better with Clipper uh, over the last little bit especially on Core XY setups. So it kind of makes sense, especially on a machine like this where you don't need, you don't need perfect XY homing. Like it kind of makes a bit more sense when you have like that Z offset switch um, that you, you really want to make sure you hit it in the same spot every time. Otherwise you're going to get not repeatable results. But uh, for something like this, where your homing is just kind of, ah, make sure you're on the bed when you're printing, um, it's kind of okay for your, your XY homing to not be the most accurate, really. It doesn't really affect it as much. Okay, it goes click, so we're good there. I don't know where those wires are gonna go. We'll figure it out later. Draw time. You guys wanna do a giveaway? Let's do a giveaway. Wow, a lot more people entered. What are we at right now? 551, huh. Oh. Quit entering. Okay, three. Two, one, there you go. Although it's an eight second delay between when I say it and when you see it, so. Okay. So delete all the old names, put everyone's name again. Okay, making me want, if I was smart, I would have affiliate links in the, the video description to builds, but I don't think I have any affiliate links for any Voron vendors. If you're a Voron vendor who does affiliate links, let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Okay, uh, so we'll, let's give away an upgrade kit. There's AliExpress. If you want to buy it off AliExpress, click the AliExpress affiliate link. They pay okay. Bellin! Bellin, Bellin, Bellin. Bellin, Bellin, Bellin. One of one. That's what I like to see. Okay, cool. You are winner number two, so... Um, after the stream, I will forward your information to Jason and he will get in touch with you. There we go. So everyone golf claps in chat for Bellin. I've got like a sliver in my finger and I can't see it and I can't get rid of it and it's annoying. I sent you $5 monster. You did? When? Oh, cheers, sorry, I missed that. And Igor, 2790, I missed that too. Cheers from Brazil. Cheers, thank you. I miss those. And where did chat go? Why did chat disappear? Oh, jeez, I gotta reset here, one second. I lost you guys. Where'd you go? I missed you so. There we go. There we go, okay. We're back alive again. Cool, okay. Back to the build. So we put that on. There we go. It should go click. We good. Okay. So now we need to put Preload two M3 nuts, preload one M3 nut, preload two M3 nuts. 
Okay. I have no nuts on the back there. I've got a crap ton of nuts on the top here. Let's take this rail off and put some nuts in here. Don't forget to like the mash button. Yes, smash the like button of mashing of something. I don't know. YouTuber things. Do the YouTuber things, people. I'm a YouTuber. Did you know that? I think that one's stripped. Nope, we're good. We're good. Woo. That was a little spicy moment there. Overhead. Okay, so we're gonna take this one off. Uh, Harry Phil's Lament, gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Okay, so how many do I need up top? I need two up top. And one in the back. Okay, so two in the top, one in the back. There we go. Let me put this back on. Oh, we gotta get this back up. Hold on a second here. Again, I'll adjust them all to final position later. There's only two up top? Wow. They got rid of a lot of the extra screws on that. And two in the bottom, which I think I already have. Yeah, I got two down there. Okay. And two in the bottom bottom. Shoot. Yeah, I don't have two in the bottom bottom there. Okay, we got to take that out. So same thing again. Okay. Yeah, the bottom end stop makes sense. Like it, it's, like it doesn't really matter if you, you, you home to the top or the bottom. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. They do the same thing. Um, unless your printer is really not repeatable on your travels, which uh, if it's not, you have big problems. Um, it doesn't matter if it's at the top or the bottom. Plus there's like factors that come into play that you kind of actually want it at the bottom. Um, because of where. And that's probably something people don't even worry about, wonder about in 3D printing. So, who here actually has worked as a machinist? Who here has worked as a machinist? Specifically one on big machines. Like specifically on bigger CNC machines. Okay, so, okay, so we got some machine. When you are doing your setup, okay, so say you got a table, okay? So, so say this is your table, okay? So this big by that big. When you only machine things this big, okay? 
Do you always set everything up exactly in the middle of the bed? Do you always set up everything exactly in the middle of the bed? Every time you do a setup. No. So D'Lo says no. Nope. No, see, they're all saying no. So, why? Why don't you always set up everything in the middle of the bed? Why don't you set up everything off the bed? It, it, it's quite simple. Um, okay, if you're doing production, if you're doing like the same thing all day, every day, it kind of makes sense, right? You probably have jigs. But it depends a lot on the machine. It depends a lot on the machine, how old the machine is. But think about it. If you're always doing everything in exactly the same spot, you're gonna wear that spot quicker. Now with belts, it's not a huge issue, but like ball screws, lead screws, um, gibs, like different motion systems. If you're doing everything in the same spot on your printer all the time, you're gonna wear things out in that position faster than other things. So we always print in the middle of the bed. Flex plates don't make it a big deal, but back in the day when you had Vorons, we just slapped a mic six or um, a sheet of PI right on the bed. Every time you took a print off, you were chiseling it off with a, one of these guys. Well, if you do that over a couple of years, you're gonna dish your bed, right? Your, your belts running over your idlers, okay? It's always in the same spot. They're always running over the same spot. Your lead screw, you're wearing the top of your lead screw more than the bottom bottom of your lead screw usually or vice versa depending on your motion system so you want your machine to wear evenly now let's be honest here 3d printers do not see the same amount of wear as cnc machines in a tool shop which run 24 7 most of the time because if they're not running they're not making money and they run for decades okay so yes it's not comparable but it's, you know, something to keep in the back of your head and just kind of think about, right? If you're running a print farm and you're always printing everything in the middle of the bed, you might want to start moving stuff around a bit. So, machine wear can be compensated. Not easily on a, on a 3D printer. Can, can you tell your 3D printer to move differently in different spots of your bed? You, it, it's one of those things that's not really a huge issue in our land, but it still is kind of a thing you may want to think about occasionally. Okay, um, so we put these on. Hey, I already have those on. H extrusions. Hey, I already have those on. So 37 millimeters. So we gotta we gotta get the 37 millimeters set up. So let's do that. A lot more motion on 3D printers. A lot more mass on a sink. Yeah. Can you reuse the deck panel? Um, I believe no. The deck panel is different. So I gotta put that bottom on. So let, let's get this adjusted for 30, 37 millimeters. Change home offsets. Yeah, you could, you could do that. It depends a lot on your setups. There's, the thing is most people don't. There's Your slicer always puts whatever in the middle of the bed. So you're always gonna wear the middle of your bed the most on a printer. Okay, 37. That is. Yep, that's good. That's good. That's good. Holy shit. That's good. Considering I did three of these, they're still in the same spot. So we're good. That ain't bad. I can dig it. Okay, um, I need the other side of that drag chain.
move parts around. Oh, I know it's, it's easy. You just click and drag, but it's, they auto generate to the middle all the time. And let's be honest, most people just load and print, right? They don't, they're not rearranging stuff manually. You just kind of, eh, it's spawned here. Send it. But again, unless you're printing like stupid, obscene amounts of things a lot, you're probably never going to wear out one location of your 3d printer more than another but it's still something you you know if you have a machine with a lot of hours on it and you're noticing some funky behavior it might be worth looking into never know it's not gonna hurt hey the porn bots are back uh report unwanted commercial content or spam be gone, thought. What is a lot of hours? A few thousand, a couple thousand, tens of thousands. This machine has a couple thousand. This machine has probably 10,000 by now, but it's also been rebuilt five times probably. And it's also five years old, so. Like my bamboo is only at I did a factory reset at one point, but my bamboo is currently at uh, 300 hours, roughly, of use. But 300 hours on a bamboo is gonna be a lot different than 300 hours on like a, a Prusa when it comes to wear, because uh, this thing chooches. <laughs> I print 8,000 parts a month, but yeah, yeah, so. Again, it all comes down to your use case. Everyone's different. Okay, so now we're putting on our drag chain bottom. There we go. So we moved the drag chain, so now the drag chains are there now. That's cool, instead of going outward. Okay, so now we got to put our bottom plate on. So I believe... So I don't need that nut anymore. I kept leaving this one nut in here because I thought it was for the uh, drag chain, but we don't mount it there anymore. So that is a non-issue. So where is this bottom plate? So again, I'm using an LDO upgrade kit which is this. So if you were one of the people that won so far, or you, you're the next winner, this is what you get. It's it's screws and nuts and, and stuff. It's what you need to upgrade a V01 to a V02. And one of them is the bottom panel, which uh, goes in like so. So let's uh, get this off. Notice any change with your channel after YouTube stealth changed their terms of service? Stranger, no. Um, are you talking about like the gun tube stuff and the swearing stuff? Um, no, I, I haven't, not a single video of mine has been affected by those changes. Um, I, let's be honest, I'm a tech channel. I don't, I don't swear a lot. Um, and I've, I've had streams where I've sworn. You guys know there are a few streams where I've, 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 said fuck many times and that's never reached the threshold to have any issues so what is WYSIWYG so what did YouTube change uh they changed so here's the thing that it sucks but guess what YouTube's a company they're allowed to do what they want they're not a government agency they, they don't have to bow to the will of the people they can do what they want they're they're a company Okay, um, they can operate their company as they see fit. And if the government comes in and starts telling them what to do, well, that's communism. We don't like that around here. So anyways, um, YouTube makes its money off ad revenue. And apparently 
the companies that pay them don't like naughty words. So you can't swear as much as you used to be able to on YouTube. Doesn't affect me because I don't swear a lot. So yeah, you're an advertising company. Exactly, like they, they sell ad spots. That's how they make money. And um, you guys are awesome, but if YouTube's not making money, they're not paying me either. So uh, when I plan, whenever um, I, I'm waiting on parts now, I ordered a new controller board. Good memorable F-bots. Exactly, you gotta save them. You, you gotta save them for when it, it's it's worth it. If, if, if you're if you're dropping F bombs all the time, you're you're diminishing it. You're devaluing it. I'm more, as a Canadian, I'm more peeved off about Bill C11. That is something I don't like. Um, and I really don't know all the nuances. <clears throat> um, Mudahar, Ordinary Gamer, um, he did a good video on it because he's also a Canadian content creator and he dove into all the issues with it. But uh, that that's something I don't like. But uh, yeah. Okay, so let's make sure I got all me nuts in here. So I got three there, I got four there, I got four there. I've got three there, three there. Okay, okay. I've got three there. Okay. Preloaded nuts. Okay, I need four in the bottom. I probably shouldn't have the controller board just kind of floating around in here, but I do. Uh, get your CanCon number now. The problem, okay, C11. So in Canada, we have something called CanCon, Canadian content. As a, if you are some form of media in Canada, this is normally radio and TV. Certain percentage of the content you air has to be what the government considers Canadian content. And this came about, was it the 60s or the 70s? And it was basically a thing to kind of combat Hollywood because, you know, we got America right there and they were, the government was worried about American influence on culture basically drowning out Canadian culture. So 20% of all songs on the radio have to be from a Canadian content creator. Um, if it's a show on TV, a certain, the show has to be either be filmed in Canada or like the producer has to be Canadian, like a certain percent of a per certain percent has to be Canadian, okay? And that's kind of always been a thing. But now they're looking to bring that to YouTube. And if you don't follow, like, and they wanna make it so that Canadian content is pushed to Canadian viewers. So YouTube, instead of the algorithm going, hey, we think you want this. Okay, because that's how I want it. I want the YouTube algorithm to just feed me to whoever it thinks wants to watch my shit. If C11 goes through, what can happen is the government can go, hey, YouTube, if somebody is watching YouTube from a Canadian IP, you need to feed them X amount of videos that are Canadian. And you need to figure out how those videos are Canadian. So I'm Canadian, I would have to get, uh, uh, all this shit in line to like prove that I'm a Canadian content creator. But the thing is, I'm a, I'm a single person operation. I don't have like, it, it, it's, it's not really viable. Now they've said they won't go after small content creators, but somebody like Linus at LTT, who employs like bloody a hundred people with millions of dollars a year in revenue, that's something he's gonna have to worry about. It, it, it's, it's not something I like. And it's not something I want to deal with. I'd rather just not be a thing. And as a Canadian who enjoys the pew pew um, hobby occasionally, haven't in years, but I used to, um, I'm already dealing with all that bullshit. <laughs> so. So yeah, okay. The front extrusion is just sitting on the deck panel. This will get secured in a few steps. Okay, cool. So, oh, that's there, that's there, that's there, that's there. Okay. 
Let's make you speak French. Uh, je peux parler français. Uh, tu, mon français n'est non, non, pas très bien. Je peux parler juste un petit peu. Uh, so. Uh, we really need to figure out the co whole content generation without relying on advertising. Um, Stranger, I will honestly say right now is the best time. It's at least up till now. Now is the best time to be a content creator as a small content creator. I don't even have 44,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel and I've been full time for almost a year now, YouTube. Because if you can, it, it, it depends on what you do. If you do shorts and TikTok, good fucking luck. But if you do something like live stream where you can actually interact with an audience and you can grow a community with YouTube memberships, Patreon, tipping, um, merch, all that, you can make good, you can make income and not have to worry about ad revenue as much. Um, the majority of my, of the slice of the pie that I receive from YouTube is from community, is from community. So that's memberships, gifted memberships, and um, super chats, basically. Uh, shorts and TikTok. Yeah, Uncle Jesse, um, because he sells prints, it makes very good sense for him to be doing shorts and TikToks because he advertises his stuff. Okay, uh, last chance. The next few steps you will install a front extrusion. In doing so, you're closing off the ends of the frame. This is your last chance to install preloaded nuts in this portion, so pay attention. Do not disappoint us. Okay, Tank Erden, gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Feels like it's the worst time for the viewer. Yeah, it is what it is. Let's make content YouTube does like. And here's the thing, you can't really go elsewhere. What are you gonna go to Rumble? They, they, they. I think the last last time I checked on Rumble, um, you got like the top page had like a few hundred views, a few thousand views, if that, on the videos, and the the company itself makes less per year than Mr. Beast does off one video. <laughs> like it, it's YouTube or Twitch pretty much or Facebook if for certain forms of content. But that that's pretty much it. There's not a lot of options out there. Okay, I want this. Yeah, we're going to do this. Okay. Trying to line things up so that the scuff marks are hidden. Going on Rumble makes me feel dirty. Well, it, it's it's the website for all the people that got kicked off other websites. Oh, there's tons of nuts on the floor. I'm not even gonna bother. YouTubers are streaming on both YouTube and Rumble at the same time and expand their audience and not only. The thing is though, okay, uh, here's it expanding your audience. I did TikTok for a little while. I have TikToks with millions of views, okay? It did nothing for me because nobody on TikTok went back to YouTube to watch my stuff and TikTok doesn't pay me. And for the content I do, I would, I would, I would quit and apply to a tool shop before I go on Rumble. Like, I don't want to be known as a content creator on Rumble or any of those sites that are, again, for the people that got kicked off of other sites. So yeah, you can argue, oh, they're expanding their audience, but it's, is it really though? Like, is there any actual ROI in doing it? Is there any like actual return on that investment? Like, I don't even think I could bring up Rumble on YouTube, like streaming, because there's like, I've seen stuff on the front page that's like, not safe. <laughs> floatplane, okay. Uh, Rundle, here's a problem with Floatplane. Here, I've tried to do Floatplane, okay? I've applied for Floatplane in the past, what? So, you go on, you go on Floatplane, oh, let me, uh, let me sign in here. 
Okay, so you go on float plane. Okay, here's float plane. See this? This is it. These are all the creators on float plane right here. What do we got? We got four, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 21. That's it. There are only 21 content creators on float plane. You, you can't get on float plane. I've tried, I've emailed LTT about it. I'm like, hey, I wanna do float plane. They're like, yeah, we're, we're not open for new creators right now. So it, it's, it's not really a viable platform, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. I would like to be on it, but uh, not heard of float plane. It's basically like LT. It's it was started by LTT. Um, it's basically. The idea, it's kind of like, what is it, Odyssey or whatever? It's basically you, you pay to get your the normal stuff you get from your content creator plus other, it's Patreon basically, um, but more content, I think, the, the idea. The You get higher resolution, higher bit rate, no ads, but you have to like subscribe to the content creators on there to view their stuff. What about Utreon? Never even heard of it. What is Utreon? It's another Patreon. I already have Patreon. Like I, I, what I'm doing right now is working. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> so. There we go. There we go, that looks like a printer. Frame nut check. Okay, cool. So we got three. Did I screw this up already? Oh, that's the bottom. This is the bottom. Okay, so the bottom. Yeah, you got four, 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 four. Okay. And the top. We got two, three, three. Okay, cool. I just sliced myself. And then we got three. Yeah, three. In the back we got, we got one, three, three, two. Okay. Okay. And then we put those on, which I've already done. Moment for mindfulness. Now that you've gotten the base frame installed, why not take a moment to step away, stretch, and have a sip of beverage of choice? Ooh, I got whiskey here. Uh, this might be a good idea to tie up your work area a bit, clean up the air and hardware, and recollect your tools to be prepared for the next build, or just, you know, keep building, I guess, you monster. Cool. What are we at right now? 1030. Do I want to keep going, or do I want to call it right here? Because I think we're in a pretty good spot. Yeah. I think we'll call it here. I think we're in a pretty good spot right now for the build. Plus I am exhausted. <laughs> I am retired. Picking up the bolts. Yeah, yeah, let's pick up the bolts. And the nuts. All the nuts. I'm crazy in the coconut. What does that mean? There we go. Okay. Well, this is the newest manual. This was, um, I think this manual had more people working on it than normal. And it's kind of like one of the ways like we want to go forward with it. I don't touch the manuals at all. I'm not involved with any of the manual stuff, so. Are you guys talking about Gun Jesus? 
Does this have an LED hookup? I don't know if this has an LED hookup. Does this have an LED hookup? Neo, I got NeoPixels. Okay, so it does have power PA ground. Okay, is the power 5 volt? What, what board is this? I'm assuming NeoPixel is 5 volt. So I'm assuming it's going to be 5 volt. So I think we're okay there. You ever get your Scully blast? I have not. I, I got, I'm going to reprint it. I'm pretty much going to reprint most of it. I think it's just, I'll do it for a while. What exactly do I do for the Vorum team? That's a good question, Sam. Um, that's a good question. Um, legacy wise, uh, I worked in a tool and mold shop for seven years. Um, so I have a bit of background when it comes to machining, um, plastic injection, um, that sort of stuff. So I've got expertise in those areas I bring to the team when my skills are needed. Um, also a lot of testing. I did a lot of testing back then. Like this machine used to be all beta stuff all the time. I did a lot of testing. Um, I'm the reason idlers are idlers. You know how they got the little angry faces? Cause I, I drew a, a sketch after seeing it in MS Paint going, grr, feed me GT2 belt. Um, and then Max went and actually modeled the eye, the eye brows into him. Oh, and community outreach. I'm on the media team, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> I have two NeoPixels on the Pico Bilical. Yeah, but that's up here. And I'll, I'm talking about the bed because the bed we're going to be underneath, right? Oh, you want to come say hi? Good boy. Hey, what's that? What's that? What's your good boy? What's your good boy? Are you a good boy? Kisses? Kisses? Uh, are you kidding? Uh, they, we did a poll. I can't remember where the poll was done, but I am um, pretty much the number one reason how I, now I'm the largest, but I'm not the, the biggest like combined other things lead to more people, but I'm the s biggest single source of people finding out about Vorons apparently. And then I think like CNC kitchen is second or something or Facebook or something. I can't remember. Is that it? Are you done? What? What's up? Why are you so needy? Are you okay, buddy? I'm trying to work here. Well, actually, no, we're done working, but... help setting up clipper main sale freezer one um i would say follow the manual go on the Voron discord if you're looking for like as you go help i got videos on my channel about how to set up a uh, clipper pretty much set up clipper and then just copy the config in okay all done that 
So we're pretty much, I think that's a good spot to call it. Do you guys think this is a good spot to call it? Cause I gotta start putting together AB drives and the stream's done in 20 minutes. So I think that's a, uh, this is a good part. I probably could have got a little bit more done, but I, I think we're okay. Well, we got the last giveaway to get due at uh, 11, so. How big is my workshop? Um, it's a spare bedroom in the basement. It's 10 feet by 11 feet. So this is the problem. Hello, I am YouTuber type person. Welcome to my crib. Um, there's roughly where you see the edge. Resin machines, light, shelf, door, filament, more filament, um, shelf of stuff. There's uh, the Delta. Uh, screws and whatnot, filament. Closet that actually I went and put shelves up on both sides of it for more storage. There's actually shelves on both sides. Uh, there's chat, say hi. There's my camera. Uh, there's my Google Home that I can use to turn the cameras on and off. Uh, this is what I look like. This is my desk, that's a mess. And here's the printer I built. This entire channel is this room. In terms of room, we have no room. There's also another spare bedroom that was kind of the workout slash spare bedroom, which was actually the original room I worked in uh, doing this before I moved over here. We've been in this room for two years now. Um, that room is the graveyard of printers I don't touch that I printed once on in an unboxing video and then just left them there. Um, yeah. Perfect what I do. So here's the thing. I want to get into more projects, okay? Um, like I, I wanna try and actually do like things. Um, so the problem is I don't have the room for that. Like I'm, I'm working on getting the garage. I'm gonna, I want to do in the fall, but that didn't end up happening. I gotta re, I gotta re do all the wiring. My garage is a mess. I gotta pull it all out, rewire it all, run new circuits to the breaker. Um, insulate it and kind of make a little shop out there just so I have more room to work, especially with like CNC stuff, because I can't do that inside. Um, also, I want to move some of the printers out there, like the bamboos, um, just for noise and so I can, you know, I, I can't do print farm. I can't print when I'm recording. So anytime I'm recording anything for a video, all the machines got to be off, right? Um, so there's that. But even then, I can't take up the whole garage because I, I need the garage for garage stuff. Like, I gotta put my lawnmower somewhere. Um, so, there's that. Just don't go renting space. So here's the thing, um, Lake St. Clair is right there. The water level here is, I can't just dig a bunker, okay? It, I, it's all clay and it's wet here. So I can't go dig a bunker. Like even right now, you wanna know where ground level is? I'm in my basement. Ground is right here. This desk is ground level. I'm at, my house is a raised ranch. This is a window. Here's the bottom of the window. And from the window to the ground is here. So only this much is underground. <laughs> um, so I can't do that. I can't put a structure in my back. People are like, go, go get one of those like 10 by 20 sheds, which would be awesome. The problem is, one, I can't put it in my backyard. The, the gaps between the houses are too small. I can't put anything. And I'd have to run power and heating out to it. So I need, I need electricity out there, heating, because um, it gets it's negative 15 at night right now, Celsius. Um, and then it gets up to like 30 Celsius plus humidity in the summer. So, and also permits, and I can't have a structure over a certain size within range of the fence. So I basically have to put it in my, like the middle of my yard. It's stupid. Um, change device and I can't connect to it more. Just, you might have to reinstall it. Um, I have a sump pump, but it doesn't run continuously. It's not that bad. Uh, raised roof garage, not really, I can't. Print a shed. <laughs> so I have been kind of looking for a place to rent. Basically, okay, Ivan Miranda's setup, that's all I want. 
that's basically it. If you know who Ivan Miranda is, if you've seen his shop, that's basically what I'm looking for. Just a concrete bunker type thing. That's all I need, okay? The problem is I live in the burbs outside the city. There's nothing like that actually near me. And I'm if I'm a self-employed YouTuber, I'm not driving 45 minutes to work. Um, so I'm kind of like stuck with what I got for now. Um, which let's be honest, less expenses. I'm not paying rent for anything. Um, so it allows me to get by with less in terms of like, you know, YouTube income and whatnot, because the channel still is pretty small. And I'll be honest, um, we're coming up on almost a year of full-time YouTube and the first couple months were a little, but uh, yeah. How can it, I, I don't know. I, I would ask that question in the Voron Discord because I've never experienced that, so. Okay, so here's the thing. Any structure that I put back there, I'd have to get permits. Um, it would need a foundation. If it does need permits, it, there's a whole bunch of building code in Canada when it comes to structures over a certain size. Depends on your area. Because I, I have to have it within far enough away from the property line, so that cuts out like a big chunk of my yard. Um, I have trees in my backyard I would have to cut down. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. I've looked into it. Because whatever structure I build has to be basically a house. It has to be fully insulated, heated, electricity, like it gets way too hot and way too cold where I live in the summer and the winter for it to just be a shed. So my backyard's actually decent size. My backyard is actually decent size because my house was built before the McMansion era. So the, the houses that are further back in my subdivision that are selling for like a million dollars that are way not worth a million dollars are on the same size lots, but you, they're like literally like shoulder to shoulder. When you walk between the houses, it's like this and they're, they're not built any better they're just big, so. Build it on your neighbor's property. I don't think my neighbor would like that. Anything self-facing, you could solar heat. Um, self is that way, so no. Move to a country with lots of space like Canada. Um, I uh, Done. <laughs> By the house next door. Um, YouTube don't pay that good. Trio shop, no. Yeah, see, I, I, I'm in a subdivision, Steven. I don't have room to do that kind of thing. Like, like where I am right now, if I go outside and walk 10 feet, I'm at my neighbor's house. Local maker space. Um, no, two reasons. One, I don't want to run my channel out of a maker space. Um, I, 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 I like my privacy. Um, two, there is one in Windsor. It's like a 30 minute drive downtown. <laughs> Move to Texas. Yeehaw, fuck that. Um, I like my power working in the winter. And uh, frankly, your government down there scares the crap out of me. So. Uh, what's the difference? Basically, it's an iterative improvement. It's not as big of a leap going from a zero, zero to a zero one, but if you're building new, there's a lot of little quality of life improvements. Also, the tool head is a much better tool head, in my opinion. The, the mini stealth burner is much improved over the regular stealth burner, mini stealth burner. Move to Colorado. Um, I gotta get my stuff sorted for that, but I'm pretty sure I am going to Colorado in uh, April. Plus also, um, if I took the little guy away from Nana, I wouldn't live. And you guys, I, I'm, sh I, I'm assuming you guys want me to keep doing what I'm doing. So if I take little guy away from Nana, that ain't happening. Wiser's not supporting. I like Wiser's. Plus, it's made literally right there. Um, where they age it all is literally like I drive by it. It's 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 near my house. I choose life. Bring Nana with you. Hell no. I can't afford that. She's retired.
but yeah so here's the fun thing I, as a youtuber i have the advantage of it I, I can work anywhere it doesn't matter i'm a youtuber but you know my wife has a job my kids in school uh my my family's here i'm not gonna upend my family and move to another country just for a a, a lower tax bracket or just you know more room to do youtube shit. so I know you guys were freaking out because a balloon was floating over your house. I could just go, I could just hop across the river and just crash with Chet. Chuck Hellebuck's like 45 minutes from me across the river, if I'm not mistaken. I know they shot it down. Hey, everyone. Cheers in, 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 in the chat here because the F-22 Raptor, the premier air support superiority fighter for the last like 25 years, billions of dollars in R&D has finally got a confirmed air to air kill against a balloon. It's, it's a start. How can I, how can I increase the amount of subscribers on my YouTube channel? Do YouTuber stuff. Keep making videos. It, it, it's YouTube, man. Okay, you want to know what's absolutely what scared the crap out of me? Okay. Uh, what do you think about the white stress marks on the bottom print? Okay, heat gun or heat your bed back up to temperature. So like ABS, heat it to like 100, 110, and just put the parts on your bed with the 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 white side like the stress marks down. And just leave it for like 10 minutes. And uh, thanks for the five. Uh, what was that? Dubes in the shower. But here, okay. So I have no problem saying this because if you look it up, it's, it's, it's available, okay? So I have no problem talking about... If you have any questions about YouTube, I, I'll provide any information I have. I won't go into specifics about my channel. But if it's publicly available, I can't really hide it. So I don't consider myself a big YouTuber at all. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good enough as a single person, single person operation, okay? Um, I'm lucky I have low expenses um, from working a lot in my younger years and saving. So I, I'm, I'm doing okay as a small channel. Um, my channel's not big. Right now we have 400 people in, in a live stream. I stream three days a week. I put up one video a week now. Um, I don't even have 44,000 subs. I, I don't have a, a play button. Um, my videos get a couple thousand views. I have like five videos over 100,000, nothing over a quarter million. My channel's a, a small channel by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not a large channel. In Canada, I'm in the top 100 earners when it comes to Super Chats on live streaming for all of 2022. That just goes to show you, like, there's millions of people in Canada making YouTube. Somehow I'm in the top 100 of earners in Super Chats in 2022. That blew me away. That I don't, my channel is not that big. And, and that's, and I'm in like the top 100 somehow in Canada, just in Canada, worldwide I'm with. <laughs> Can't compete against the VTubers on YouTube. You do not mess with the VTubers on YouTube. But yeah, somehow, yeah. So, I, uh, remember when all the Twitch stuff leaked? Something like if, if you are making more than minimum wage on, on live streaming, you are doing better than like 99% of people on the platform. If you're making more than minimum wage live streaming, you're doing better than 99%. And if you're making more than like hundred grand a year, you're in the top 0.01% or something stupid like that. It, it, it's like, so goodbye, Alaska. I could buy a, a, a compact sedan if I was lucky. You know, if I didn't have a mortgage, food bills, phone bills, internet bills, cost of running a YouTube channel, and you know, life expenses. 
cell picks on my feet. You don't want that. Uh, how's the drop effect XG compared to the Revo? Um, it's fine. Um, it prints fine. It, it's a, a higher flow hot end. It's not, I don't think it's a true high flow hot end, but it's higher flow than a Revo. Um, the only downside is it, it, it does have replaceable, it's, it's nozzles, you gotta swap nozzles, so you might have ooze if it's not tightened correctly, but it is a um, one-handed, but it's a kinematic mount, so you're not violating Slice's patent, thankfully, but they're proprietary nozzles as well. Um, I think it's a solid hot end. I really like the mounting options with it, and it feels high quality. So, if you're looking for something different, go for it. Uh, Kenny and Russell, thank you for coming members. Is that all whiskey? No, it's whiskey and water. It's like half and half. How much have you spent on equipment to record and stream? Um, what, I, okay. One of these days I'm gonna get this room clean up and actually do like a, a tour. But um, if you're wondering equipment, so right now, this is my setup. So this is my streaming setup. Um, I got a lav, I got a Rode Wireless Go. I might be getting, I'm planning on getting a Rode Wireless Go 2 for uh, when I cover the events this year because I want I want two labs. This one only has one transmitter. Um, I, I want two transmitters and I'll get to that in a minute. So we'll start out, move in. So um, overhead camera right here. Hi, um, this is a Sony A5100 um, with the kit lens. I like the kit lens because that way I can just reach up here and zoom in and out. Okay, so when I'm zooming in and out, that's, I'm literally just grabbing it and zooming in and out, okay? So, so that's this. This used to be the main camera, okay? Um, so that, I got that. This camera right here, I bought that one open box Best Buy. Uh, it was like 500 bucks Canadian. Um, bought that like two or three years ago. Um, this camera right here is a Sony A6300 4K camera. That camera I bought used on Facebook Marketplace for a couple hundred, I can't remember exactly. Um, it has a Sigma 16 lens on it. That cost me more than the camera probably. Um, it's got a small rig cage on it. And I think the cage came with it too. And that's HDMI into a cam link. That one's also a cam link. So both these cameras are cam link. Um, so, there's this camera. So the problem with the A6300, the, 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 the screen doesn't flip forward, so I can't see it, so I have to look at this monitor. These are just generic computer monitors. Um, this is a Sony C920. Um, I got a stream deck. The computer we built on a live stream, actually. It's a Ryzen 3100. It's got 16 gigs of RAM. It's got two cam links plugged into it, a USB expansion board for PCI Express, and a 1060, 1066 gig graphics card. And 120 gig SSD that's full, but I need to put another thing in. Um, so that's the streaming PC. And I stream using NVENC. So right now I'm using um, like nothing, cause it's all, it's all GPU encoded. Um, and then for videos, um, I have a separate camera for videos. I have a Sony a6400. Uh, it's got a Tamron 24 millimeter lens on it. Um, the lens is okay. It's better than the kit lens. The problem is it's, uh, well, it's, it's 24 mil, which is okay. I can move it. I, the problem is the autofocus on it is shit. It, it's very jittery. Um, so I have to pretty much just manual focus. Um, or I just push the button, it, like I push to focus. Uh, I got an expansion battery pack on it so that lets me use the, uh, the, the what is it, the N550, F550 batteries, so it, it gets a little bit longer battery life. This is always on a mount. I, I don't, hand, I, I suffer from essential tremors, so my hands shake, so if I'm trying to record something, my, my hands just shake. So I, I don't do free-handed stuff. Um, so this is what I use for videos. I put the, the lav, I plug into it. Um, when I cover events, I have a Zoom, a Zoom H4N Pro for audio. So I'll have one going to a lab on me and the other one's a mic. It's a, I don't know, it's a mic. I paid like 80 bucks for it. And then I use a GoPro Hero 10 on a Volta. Um, but I'm thinking of ditching this for the next event I cover 
because I don't want to carry all this stuff around and just getting a Rode Wireless Go 2 and then just two lav mics and plug it directly into this so that my entire setup for live events is this. I also use this for time lapses. Um, I think that's about it for, oh, I've got lights. I, I, I don't know, I got the LED panels, like the newer ones that are cheap. And then I got tripods that again, I just bought off Amazon. That's pretty much the equipment I use. Now that was all bought over years. Like when I first started streaming, it was just the C920. And then I actually used this camera for a while, um, which is a Canon, Canon Vixia HF R800. I used this as my main cam with the C920 for a while. And then eventually I put, I got the A5100 and this went up top as the overhead camera. The problem is um, I left this on all the time. I always forgot to turn that overhead camera off and I burnt out the, the sensor. So it, 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 it's like pixelated mess now. So I don't even know why I still have it. It's broken. Um, so when that happened, I put the A5100 up there and then I bought the A6300 used. Um, yeah. Yeah, John, that GoPro. Yeah, it, it, I think the app finally works for streaming. It's GoPro, good hardware, but holy shit, the software is just a mess. Like half the time I can't turn it on from the Volta. I have to turn the GoPro on, then it connects to the Volta. I can't turn it on from the Volta. It's, it's, and somehow the battery's dead, even though it wasn't dead. I don't know. So giveaway time. Let's do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. So what time is it? 11? Okay. Um, I'll close it off. You'll, I'll give you five minutes. At 11.05, we'll do the draw. The software needs, it always needs work. But it's not overheating anymore, so that's good. Yeah, we'll do the filament after. I think we're going to run the stream late today. I'm in a good mood. And then for software on streaming, I have OBS, um, which is free. And then for editing videos, I use DaVinci Resolve which I, I bought, I have a license for it. And I, it came with a stream deck or a speed deck for editing, which I hate editing. So it made it faster. So I'm happy with that. And I think that's pretty much it for the hardware. Um, I got the Google Home with a, um, one of those little plug-in um, home controller things so I can talk to it. So what I can do is say, okay, Google, turn the cameras on and it'll turn the cameras on. And then I could say, turn the cameras off. It turns the cameras off because they're both plugged into the same outlet. And then I also have it set through the app where if I forget to do that at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., I can't remember what it is. They, it just automatically turns them off. Like if they're on a timer. So that way, even if I forget to turn the cameras off, they, they won't stay on more than, than overnight. So hopefully I don't kill another camera because they're not cheap. <laughs> What's my whiskey choice? Uh, Weiser's, JP Weiser's is my go-to, which I can't find in the States. So yeah. So that's the equipment. Um, benches in the room, those cost money. Lights, those cost money. Like it, it's, I didn't do it all at once. The biggest problem I had um, when I started getting, I started streaming just cause I was bored during the lockdowns. Right. But then after a couple of weeks and months, I was like, you know what? This is kind of serious. So I started like looking up things. That's why like I bought the A5100 cause everyone's like, Oh, buy an A5100. Um, the problem I ran into was a lot of the YouTube videos on guides and tutorials. Like I watched the uh, Harris Heller, um, Epos Fox, uh, Sam something. I can't remember Woodhall, I think. Like there's, there's a bunch of people that I watch that like, you know, the YouTube gurus of streaming, the people you watch when you want to learn about streaming, pretty much everything they do though, is based around you're, you're just sitting at your computer playing games. Like, so it doesn't alter, like I'm standing up, like they're like, oh, get it Sigma 16, lock the focus, get that Boca going. And I'm like, I, I can't do that because I'm always moving around. And I want, every, I don't want like, where, where's the dial? Where is the dial? There, there it is. Am I even moving it? I can't see. 
yeah, yeah. So this is a Sigma 16, right? So I can drop it down to F1.4, okay? Focus on my face. Focus on my face. There we go. Yeah. See, I could do this. Look, I got the bokeh going. I look, it looks, but then everything in the background is out of focus. And when I move over here and I'm moving around, right? Like it, it, it's, it's like, it's a blurry mess half the time. Cause it's always trying to focus on me. So I run my F stop like really open. I should have checked what it was before I did that. I think it's like F nine or 10. Yeah. So I run my f-stop very open, which means I have a ton of light in this room too, um, so that everything's in focus. So. So I, I'd rather have everything in focus. So the problem is with everything in focus, it, it, it wash, like everything's darker. You don't get as good of a contrast with the colors. Uh, Jeremy, 250 in a few years, you have a little camera, man. He has caused so much damage in this room by dropping stuff. Um, am I bringing Death Racer? No. Um, like, that's why I don't even want to bring the Zoom. Um, I want to try and get my entire streaming setup, or my my uh, on-location setup, down to just this. So I want to get a Rode Wireless Go 2, so I have two transmitters, so I can hook it in top. Because you, you can do is you can just you know clip it on top. There we go, and then I have an audio in, so I'll just plug it into there. I have a lav on me. What was that noise? I have a lav on me, and then the uh, I just take the other lav and I just clip it on people or I put it in a mic and just have them hold it. Um, it just makes it simpler. Uh, Dragonflame gifted five community memberships. So when I go the, to Colorado, I don't think I'm gonna bring it. I'm just bringing carry on. I'm just bringing a backpack with this, uh, a laptop and clothes and that's it. So, cause uh, after all the shit going on, I don't wanna show up there and not have half my stuff. So let's do that draw. Yeah, I let it run long. So let's close that. Oh, we got 700 something people. Okay. Uh, into Tony's videos style, it's all about light. Yeah, lighting does a lot of stuff, like get a light that mounts to the cold shoe. I might do that too. Do I have issues with the GoPro? Not so much. I don't, rec I, I record at 2.7K 60. I don't record at 5K. Um, like if you, if you want to know what, like, um, let's see here. So like, let me, let me pull up here. Yeah, this was a good video. Ellie some promotion. Um, okay, well, we'll do the giveaway. Let's do the giveaway. Hey, let's do the giveaway. Boom! Surprise giveaway! Somebody's gonna win a V02 upgrade kit. Yeah, I have GPS turned off. Just why, why would I need GPS? JRW, JRW, who are you? Who is JRW? You are you, okay. And there you go. So congratulations, you will also win. So I got the three people there. So we'll do the uh, the giveaway for the filament in a little bit here. Well, I think we'll just hang out for a bit. I gotta, I gotta drink here anyways. Um, so uh, the GoPro, Ooh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. So this is basically like, this is from uh, East Coast Rep Rap Fest. This is the, the, the footage I get off the GoPro, okay? Um, I think I recorded 4, 4K 60 or 4K 30. I might've recorded this in 4K 30. And for just interviewing people and, and talking at an event, 
Oh. Yeah, oh, no, we, we effed, we effed, we're back. I think we're back. We effed, yep, we effed. What were you talking about, John? Go plan to not buy the upgrade. Insta360. I don't like the insta, I don't like that really big fish side look. Yeah, the, the stream OBS crashed for a second there. Um, I'm trying to see. It's kind of mech quality. It's good enough. Like, I, I'm, I'm not Casey Neistat walking around with like that crazy setup. Like I, it, it it's just GoPro, it's good enough. The problem with GoPro is lighting. GoPro has issues with low lighting. That's the problem with GoPros. How am I liking the XG? It's good enough. It's, it's fine, I got it in there. I think I talked about it earlier in the stream. It's it's a solid hot end. Three D conference. No, I'm talking about um, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest in end of April. It happens to be the weekend of after four twenty in Denver, Colorado. And if I go, I'm flying out on April twentieth. I'll be getting there around four something p.m. What do I think about pairing a P1P with AMS? If you want to do multi-material with uh, the bamboo setup, it's a good option. I, It's currently, I think, the best multi-material out of the box experience I've ever used. I haven't used many, to be honest. Um, the only downside with the AMS is it's very picky with spools and filament type, so. Uh, there's additive manufacturing strategies in New York. Yeah, I'm not going to that. E East Coast Rep Rap Fest is already a uh, an, a good long drive. It's like a nine, 10 hour drive to me to drive out there. And I'm not driving to New York. Yeah, just can't justify. Yeah, honestly, OGK, um, the P1P is a, it's a, it's the best printer that Bamboo makes because of the value for its money. I don't think they'll ever make a printer better than this, cheaper than this. I don't think they'll ever make a printer cheaper than this, let's be honest. They gotta somehow make money at some point. So, yeah. Uh, choice, would you ever have Emma? It depends what you're doing. Here's the thing. Tool changers get pricey quick. Look at a look at an XL. Okay, Prusa XL. Um, if you're just doing multicolor, single nozzle setups like the AMS are fine. The only downside is purge. It takes, it adds a lot of time and you gotta purge. That's the downside. Um, but tool changers are complex and expensive, but you can do multi-material better. And they're a little bit faster because you don't have to purge as much. Still need to prime, but you don't need to purge. What are the colors called? I don't know what they're called exactly. Let me see here. Um, they're both Polymaker or Polylite ABS. Um, does it say the color on the spool? Purple, it's purple and teal. So it's it's Polymaker, Polylite ABS, purple and teal are the two colors um, that we got here. I, I, the overhead camera colors suck, but here they are. So. I thought I'd do a tool changer. Um, not really. Um, the only machine that would really be practical for a tool changer would be the Trident. Um, Cause doing it on a moving gantry is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, also doing a tool changer with no custom components is another pain in the butt. Everything on a Voron, ooh, excuse me. Everything on a Voron has to be commercial off the shelf. So if you wanted to do a tool changer with using only parts that you could just buy um, getting something that's repeatable and accurate and reliable with off the shelf, non-custom parts. Good luck. Yes, we're doing belted Z. We're going to be doing the belted Z mod. Urkfa better. It, yes and no. 
Um, it's compatible on more printers. The AMS is only compatible on bamboo. So are you, is your printer not a bamboo? Then Urkfa, is your printer a bamboo? Go AMS. Because you can't use Urkfa on a bamboo and you can't use the AMS on non-bamboos. So doesn't matter how which one's better. They're, they're completely different ecosystems. Belted Z worth it? If you want to fool around with something different, yes. Otherwise, no. It's on a V0, on a V0. No, this is a silver frame. It's not space gray. Yes, 3D Chameleon has a setup for bamboos. And it's faster and it's cheaper. The only thing is, I don't think it's compatible with their slicer. I think you have to use Prusa Slicer with it and you have to do a post-processing script. What site did I buy my Voron from? Um, triggered. Um, I can't answer that because I've never actually bought a Voron kit, ever. Um, the Vorons that I have purchased have either been completely self-sourced or they were kits sent to me by um, companies. So LDO, um, mostly LDO, Fizek, um, Lecter, um, Ratrig, Secit, etc. Um, if you're looking to buy a kit in Canada, I can vouch for Sparta 3D. Uh, they are a retailer I have purchased from in the past, uh, not kits, but other items, and they carry LDO. So check out Spotter 3D, buy an LDO kit. Those I can vouch for. So. How to solve stringing. Retraction, temperature, print speed. There's a bunch of things. Depends on your filament. The, the, there's a lot of ways you can go fixing it because there's a lot of different causes for stringing, so. Is there any downsides to having more inputs on the Urkva? Uh, not really. It expands pretty well. So if you want to do like a 12 unit one, it just gets big. It just gets big. Uh, three lab tech in Calgary. Uh, I haven't used them. They're probably okay. Um, I've used, what else, for filament? I've used Canadian filaments for filament in the past. Um, Ender wire build soon? No. I've built a switch wire on stream. Steve's done an ender wire, and I don't think there's enough of a difference to justify building another ender wire, like another switch wire. Um, so I have a switch wire and I don't use it. So building another one that's slightly different because it's used an ender as a base, when Steve's already done it, it's just, I, 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 I don't think fitting in the schedule is worth it, put it that way. Because right now the schedule, we got this build, Tuesday we're starting the rat rig build. So we're gonna be we're gonna be busy with builds for the next month and a half, two months, okay? Because every week it'll be Saturday night with this guy, which hopefully is probably five or six streams. We'll see how it goes. Um, the rat rig V-Core, I have no idea how long, probably again, five to eight streams. Most of my builds are five to eight streams usually. Sometimes longer if we run into uh, issues. Um, we also have um, project whatever the hell this is which is rebuilding a Delta, uh, a monoprice mini Delta that's missing a bunch of stuff and kind of turning it into something viable. Um, we have a second uh, cube that we have to rebuild or not rebuild. We got to swap some motors in and revert some things and, and get it operational again. Um, basically, we've already done part. We've got it printing, but we got to go re revisit it. Um, what else? There's the V1, but that'll probably be that. What I'm doing with the V1 will be videos um, instead. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I think I'm going to end the stream now. Yeah. Let's do a giveaway. One more giveaway. So if you haven't entered yet for your chance to win some filament from Polymaker, uh, you had plenty of chances and apparently less people entered that. Then the uh, 
the V2 stuff. So one second here. Okay. So I need a number. Uh, give me a number between one and 10. Let's just do one and 10. One and 10. Three, I could do three. One, two, three. So the winner will get an email from me after the stream ends. You fill out the form, you get your filament, a couple days to a couple weeks, depending on where you live in the world. So let's see here. Roger T. Pull up your information here. What? Roger T. Control F. I can't find Roger T. Where? February 4th filament giveaway. Control F, Roger T. Am I missing something here? Roger T. How, how are you not in the Roger T? Okay, one second here. Why isn't your email showing up? Control F. Okay, Roger. Um... Oh, there it is. Okay, found you. Found you. For some reason, I couldn't control F for your name. That's weird. That's that's really weird. Okay, I found you. You got a Yahoo email. Okay, congratulations. So you'll get an email F from me uh, later tonight. Uh, fill out the form. Get your filament. A couple days to a couple weeks, uh, depending on where you are in the world. So, there you go. Congratulations. Golf claps in chat. Okay, so I think we're gonna end it there. Um, go finish my drink, get some food, I'm hungry. Um, so yeah, we got, this is roughly where I felt what I wanted to get tonight um, because then we can move on to the gantry, like make the XY motion as its own stream, which I kinda, I like blocking out these build streams into sections so that people following along at home um, don't get like stuck halfway through essentially. So we'll call it there. Um, hope you had fun tonight. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, again, shout out to LDO Motors uh, for providing some upgrade goodies for this kit. Uh, if you wanna know more, check out any vendor that carries LDO stuff in your country. Um, I'm not gonna link them all because there's a ton of them. Just Google LDO Motor Kits, you'll find it. Um, shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament that we give away on this stream. Um, if you wanna know more about them and other vendors that help support the channel via affiliate links, link in the description as well. Doesn't cost you anything extra, it goes a long way to support the channel. And for those that donated to the stream, became members of the channel or gifted memberships to others, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. You're all awesome. Even everyone in chat, everyone in chat's awesome. Uh, don't forget to like that smash button, uh, ring the bell, all that other YouTuber shit that I'm supposed to say. Um, helps the numbers and bigger number, better person, right? Um, so I think we're gonna call it there. I will see you on Tuesday, which is now Rat Raid Tuesday, when we'll start the V-Core build. Um, if you haven't seen the video, go watch it. I put out a video today on tap and uh, I hate winter in my basement, it gets so dry. Um, so yeah, we're gonna call it there. It's getting late, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna finish my drink, have a snack and go to bed. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe out there and wash your hands. Cheers.